All right, in the last video, we started making ourselves run around by uh, changing a parameter in code. This running parameter right here. So as you can see, it goes on, off, on, off. We are on our way to making a game right now. We can jump, we can run, we can idle, we can do some things, but we still don't have a jumping animation. We can start to make that. And to be honest, our code is just messy at this point. There are a lot of reasons why it is messy. So let's start to actually do things correctly. Let's start to fix this up. And we're going to start by messing with these two variables right here. So in the coding world, <laughs> it's actually considered bad practice to make variables public for just to make them public. And, but we need to have access to it in Unity in order to assign the variables, right? Now, also, this character already has these variable, these things on him, so we don't even really need to assign these. We can actually like make it happen in a different way. So, let's do it. We're gonna change these to private, private, and I'm gonna show you two different ways to go about this. One for each one of these variables. So, let's say in the rigid body right here, we're gonna say private void start. Now that right there is ran when this object becomes active, right? Uh, when as soon as this object comes into the game, it automatically runs this part of the script. As soon as the script comes in the game, it becomes active and everything. It runs the start function inside the code. Okay, so everything that's in here is run once, only at the beginning. Okay, and we want to say rb equals git component. Okay, and if we write in here what component we're looking for, we know uh, it's supposed to be a rigid body 2D, and we'll get it. Now this get component will get a component inside of us, another component inside of here, and remember all these things are called components, and because we know it's a rigid body 2D, because after all we set it as a rigid body 2D, it has to match, this will always go into here. So whatever you called it, whatever you set it as, is it goes into that right there okay and just like that we have access to our rigid body again now let's say for the sake of discussion that there's something that you want to drag over for whatever reason right you can actually create a tag this is something that's built into unity and you can do this it's called serialized field you can keep it private and you can serialize field and it'll still have it in here so you're going to see RB go away once it finishes loading. There it goes. Uh, so RB is gone. And, but the anim stays because I serialized the field. Even though it's private, it's serialized now. You see? Now, I like to keep this all on one line, but different people do it differently. You can have it above it. I was just, just showing that to you. But it's okay to have it on the same line, too. I like to have it on the same line just so it... I don't know, it's how my brain works. Now, better practice is best just not to have things exposed for the most part, so... So, I like to do this. I just wanted to show you that you can serialize it. But, me personally, I like to do that, so the less things that you have to drag over and stuff, the better, in my opinion. So, this is all kind of automated. Because the thing is, we'll talk about prefabs later, but when you're making this into a prefab, these things you will have to drag it over again every single time and if you don't need to do that why do it now let's talk about this part right down here we're not really doing input correctly um right now we've got it hard coded so that like the input is uh gotta be a and d and space bar for this the truth of the matter is unity has its own input system right and if you go to edit uh, project settings input, it'll actually pull it up over here. You go down like this, you see where it says axes. You can make a lot of different things inside of here. It already has a horizontal function and a vertical one set up inside of here. And as you can see, it has A and D set up as the negative button and the positive button. And it also has the down I mean, uh, the uh, S and W set up here as well for the uh, vertical, negative, and positive once more. So it already has all the functions that we need. It also even has a jump function inside of it, spacebar right there. So we can actually make it 
so that this works a little bit better. Used to actual <laughs> what the input is there, and we can always switch what inputs needed inside the input manager there. We can even code in like some different uh, making the inputs inside the game itself. Uh, you can do a lot of things there with that input with the input that's uh, built into Unity, whereas over here it's automatically always the keys that we created it as. Okay, so get axis. You gotta remember that this is over here as an axis. Anytime it has uh, two different directions inside of it, two different uh, key presses, a negative and a positive, that's an axis. So you're gonna say get axis, and you're gonna get the string name, horizontal, and that will return a float, right? So, as you see here, it's not returned true anymore, right? Why is that? Well, it's because this is a float. It actually returns a number between negative 1.0 and 1.0, depending on how far in the axis you are. Uh-oh, we've uh, put in a float here, and all we've done is make it so that it... Uh, it doesn't know. This isn't true or false. It's a it's a number between negative one and one point oh. It's not a true or false statement. So we're gonna keep it going like this. Float direction equals input dot get axis horizontal. And you're gonna see in a little bit that if we're gonna make a vertical version, we're gonna have a problem with that. So we're gonna actually call this h direction. Okay. Now. We have this h direction, and so we want this to say if h direction is, and where this is for moving left, is less than zero, meaning that that number is, uh, you know, less than zero, so it's a negative number. That means that we're supposed to be moving to the left, right? Then we're going to do all this stuff. If else if h direction is greater than zero, then we're going to do all this stuff. And else, we don't run, right? We don't play our running animation or anything. All right. Going back to Unity. Boom. Works. Works. You see what I'm saying? Now, a lot of you might be thinking, okay, what's the point of that? Like, all we did was uh, we changed it to the this axis instead of, like, with the keys that we had. Well, now we can go into the input manager and we can switch things around. It'll be a lot more effective in the long run. So that's kind of the second thing that we uh, really needed to clean up inside of our code as well and still really messy inside of here. But I don't want to fix it all right now because like the more that we do inside of here, the more confusing it's going to get as time goes on. I, it's still pretty messy, but as long as it works, then uh, the truth is most games that are really is have messy code. It's just it's just how it is like it, you can only build so far without it getting messy But you kind of want it to be pretty clean at this level when you only have what 45 lines here So yeah, <laughs> don't worry. It'll, we're gonna clean it up more as time goes by We'll teach you more and we'll get it running better and show you the full advantages of using like the axis instead But for now, we're gonna leave this the same clean up a little bit. We've gotten it so that it looks a little bit better um, and by nature, we're going to have to, uh, create a cleaner code here in a second anyway, inside the next video, because we're going to start talking about, uh, switching the character states so that he doesn't, you know, run in the air and do things like that. Okay. So thank you very much for hanging out here with me. If you liked the video, please hit the like button below and, uh, leave comments, uh, give me some feedback. Let me know what I can do better or what you want for the next video series. Uh, just anything like that. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell notification button so you can know when I'm posting up all those new tutorials, which I will be posting new ones for free pretty often. So thank you very much. You have yourselves a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.